Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Josiah and in front of me I have an array of adjustable suspension components. Working at FDF Race Shop and dealing with customers all the time, I find that nobody really has a good understanding of the terminology of any of these components. Any one of them has three or four different names and if you try to look them up on Google, maybe none of them will give you the result that you're looking for. So I've laid out all these parts. They all have a fairly specific name coming from my understanding because if I go to look up or design or make any one of these parts, I know the exact name that it needs to be called. So let's start on my right side here where we have a simple misalignment spacer. The spacer is inserted into a heim joint typically and gives you a misalignment distance so that you can install a heim joint or any kind of bearing inside of a subframe or a shackle on a vehicle and you're able to make up that difference using these spacers. This is not a high misalignment spacer. This is actually a high misalignment spacer. You will see that there is a relief cut and a shoulder so that this spacer, it is able to articulate a much larger degree so that if this heim joint needs a lot of travel range, it is gonna be able to fall into this relief and the bearing itself will actually go beyond its shoulder and recess itself inside the joint. So this spacer, will have a lot more freedom to articulate within the, the bearing than this one because this one just has a square shoulder that will contact the body of the heim joint much sooner. The next two spacers are just called conical spacers. They often are just made to fit a very specific application. So for example, on some of the cars that we design kits for, 350Zs, Mustangs, they all have a special taper fit. The conical spacer may also be made to fit inside of a knuckle or inside of any kind of taper joint that you may find on an automotive application. Like I said, they're usually specific to a type of car um, and can't really be used universally. The next thing is a pretty simple left hand and right hand threaded linkage or adjuster linkage. We use these to lengthen or shorten a distance between two points so that you can adjust your alignment. More commonly, these would be used on like ladder bars or four link systems, but for our applications and in drifting, it's typically used on tie rod ends or adjustable control arms for our multi-link in the rear or sometimes in the front, depending on how the geometry is designed. And this is just a smaller version of that. They come in all different shapes, sizes, thread pitches, but typically it's a left-hand thread and a right-hand thread. This is called a uniball or a spherical bearing. The spherical bearing is actually inside of what we call a uniball cup. The cup itself is generally made out of a high strength alloy steel. The ones we use are made from 4130 chromoly. It uses a snap ring to hold the uniball inside, and this is a weldable piece that can give you a bearing mount on anything that you may need. This one has been confusing for a lot of people to come up with a name for, but if you are to look up adjuster nut or double adjuster, those are the two names that will give you this result on a internet search. So this is a double adjuster. It has an external thread that is a larger diameter than the internal thread. And the external thread is right hand. The internal thread is left hand, allowing you to rotate this adjuster nut and extend or compress whatever the linkage is that you have this welded to. For this application that we have made and, and built these for, we have uh, three locking bolts so that we can get rid of a jam nut, which takes up a lot of valuable space. Um, and then we can just lock this thread by tightening these three bolts. And we also have a adjuster spot on the back or on the front that you can use a wrench for. So these are super helpful when you need to have a tight and constrictive adjustment on a control arm that may have a lot of items around it. And this will give you the ability to lengthen or shorten it without having to unbolt the arm. A next one that is really difficult to find, but quite a few companies, aftermarket control arm companies do sell these and we make these ourselves. This is a ladder bar adjuster or ladder adjuster. It's got a, a left hand male thread on the outside and a right hand female thread on the inside. So that if I put one of these heim joints inside, and I have a left hand bung here. If I adjust this, it'll lengthen and shorten the distance between whatever two points you have and giving you the ability to adjust 
Now this and this component, this does the exact same thing as the ladder adjuster, but this would be called a jack screw or a hex linkage screw. It's kind of a weird name, but this is just what's been defined as this part. This is two male threads, one being left hand, one being right hand. And if used in conjunction with a female heim joint, you can get your adjustments done with a pretty compact design. If the other end of the arm had the, had the thread here, you could lengthen or shorten this with, by simply just turning this hex and then you would have a jam knot on either side. So that is what that item is called. The next thing on the list here is a solid heim joint or a solid rod end. This is simply a joint that doesn't need to articulate with a bearing. It only needs one plane of, or one axis of movement, I should say. Um, and then typically when you tighten it, it also prevents rotating uh, because these are two large flat surfaces. So this is pretty common when you're connecting a tension arm to a control arm and you don't want the control arm to pivot or rotate, this will prevent that from rotating, um, but it will allow for adjustment this way. So that's what a solid rod end is used for. And the next thing up is a left hand heim joint rod end or rose joint. If you look up any three of those names, you will find um, this. And after the left hand, we have a right hand. So this is the exact same thing. It is just a right hand thread. These are super common and oftentimes the same price for left hand and right hands. So there's no worries on getting any amount of either. They're both very easy to purchase, especially if you're buying these items through us. We have thousands of these in stock. This would be a female heim joint, rod end, or rose joint. Um, it's the exact same principle, but the thread is on the inside of the joint. These have their uses outside of these when you want to have some sort of adjustment that is space restrictive. You can get a pretty good adjustment range with using one of these paired with a female heim joint and then your control arm maybe has a female shackle here and you could get a very short arm that has a very large amount of adjustment range and a super strong joint by going with a female versus a male because if you use a male you're going to be a little more restrictive on your space and how the adjustment can be done. So it's all about your application and what you're able to do. There's also something to consider if you're unable to reach a jam nut inside of a subframe or something, maybe the ears for the subframe go quite a bit past the hole. A female heim joint's perfect because the jam nut is gonna be much further away from where you're mounting it. The jam nut would be way out here, so you would be able to tighten it without being inside or a wrench not being able to get in there. Whereas if you use a male one, you're gonna to have to be able to get a wrench pretty close to where the heim joint is bolted to the vehicle. So this application may be really hard to tighten. So keep that in mind if you are buying these parts or doing something with this setup. Can you get a wrench inside the subframe? And if you can't, maybe consider a female heim joint to do your adjustment ranges or you can use a uniball or a spherical bearing, weld a tube to it and then have your adjuster way out here. There is a number of ways that you can do something to get the easily adjustable arm that you need. And lastly, we have a threaded clevis or shackle. Um, clevis is more common. If you type in shackle, you probably won't find much. These are kind of like the conical spacers in that they are very specific to the car that you're doing these arms for. For example, the, the, the chassis that we design arms for, I have a clevis for a 350Z that will fit onto the traction arm. And then I have another clevis for the 350Z that will fit the toe arm. The two of them are different dimensionally and they require more clearance for things like the casting of the knuckle. So every clevis will probably be different depending on your application. This is not going to be a commonly purchased item but rather a custom made item. So it might be best to buy these threaded bodies or if you bought a raw material bolt, you could use a bolt and build your own clevis to fit or you can buy clevis kits where they give you two ears with a plate and you basically cut the plate to the right width and then you weld the clevis together. So that's what this is called. You may be able to buy 
general purpose ones that have set distances for custom applications, but you probably won't be able to buy one that fits your car. So that is just a really quick summary of a lot of components that people really don't know the names about or know anything ab about them, but everybody has seen them if you've bought adjustable control arms. So those are the proper names. If you need to know what to order, maybe you have a set of control arms that uses one of these and your adjuster nut is gone bad or broken or something, you know what to call it when you go to replace that specific component. Because a lot of times, if you don't know the name of it and you're going back and forth with the company, they're just gonna try to sell you the entire control arm because they don't know what you're talking about. Um, if you contacted us, I would know what you're doing and I would be able to sell you an individual part, no problem. But um, a lot of times these companies don't have the designers of the products answering the phone call. So with that, take this information and apply it to your build and gain some knowledge on the proper terminology of adjustable suspension components. Thank you for watching our channel and we will see you guys on the next episode, whatever it may be. We're gonna get back into a front suspension geometry display with double wishbone, probably within the next episode or two, and then continue building up our Corvette. So if you wanna stay in tune with all of that, make sure you subscribe to the channel and uh, let us know in the comments what else you wanna see because we have a lot of knowledge here and a lot of experience. If you don't know anything about something, put it in the comments and we'll, uh, we'll touch on it. We'll see you guys in the next video.